Welcome to the ADA restroom lesson. We're going to work on our floor plan and I'm going to go to level one, floor one I've called it, and I've already loaded in uh, two families in the plumbing section and one is a toilet, a three-dimensional toilet, and the other is a wall hung lavatory that I did get from Revit. So I'm going to bring in the 3D toilet and I'm going to use my shift bar to, my, I'm sorry, my space bar to uh, rotate it. I'm just going to put it in approximately where I think it needs to go. I know I, don't, I want the two back to back on the plumbing wall that's been set up for me. And because the ADA guideline says that I need 18 inches to the center line, or it's actually a range that I can have, uh, but I like 18 inches. And uh, so what I do is I touch the toilet there and I uh, type in uh, the correct dimension. And then I go over to the modify menu. I have my buttons closed down right now. And I'm going to go over to the modify menu and use a line to line up the center of the toilets with each other. And I know that they're the correct distance apart from the wall. So now I'm going to bring in the larger lavatory. It already has a mirror attached to it. I'm going to see how that works out. And I'm going to place that. It's a wall hosted item, so it needs a wall. And for right now, I'm going to leave it only one because I want to try out um, my clearances and make sure that I have the proper clearances. Now, instead of doing a lot of work on the main floor plan, which I'm going to lose the information later, I need to make a call out. So I'm going over to the View tab, and I'm going to make a window of sorts around the area that's going to be enlarged. And it, going over to the Project Browser, I'm going to see it under Floor 1, Call Out 1, and I'm going to end up renaming that to be Enlarged. Uh, toilet plan and we'll leave it at quarter inch scale for now there's good reason to to think that I might update it later I'm going to turn off the floor for now uh, later we're going to split that floor and put porcelain tile in there just using the annotate uh, I'm sorry the dimension the annotate tab getting my dimension to the center line one more time and then checking my other clearances in the room. I'm going to draw a detailed line around my lavatory. And the clearance for the lavatory is measured to the center line of the drain. It's 30 inches by 48 inches. So I'm just getting my rectangle here. After we get that, we're going to want to center it and move it into place. So I'm just grabbing the center line of my box and um, moving it in uh, the center line of the drain. I'm going to text, put some text on that, 332nd, and denote the clearance. So we write in the clearance here, the 30 by 48, and uh, we'll call it clear space. You're going to end up doing this for both of the fixtures and you're going to use all caps in any kind of writing that you're going to do on these construction documents. Now we're going to go investigate the toilet clearance that we need, uh, which is 56 by 60 inches in, uh, this, in this particular room. Um, it does vary whether you're doing a, a toilet compartment stall or you're in uh, a single user restroom. Now, dimensions will update dynamically when you select several things, but you can see that you can't manipulate the dimension to be exactly right. So I'm going to use uh, this one line here to establish my uh, uh, left side clearance, and then I need to double check that I haven't changed the clearance at the lavatory. So we're going to put in some annotative uh, lines to indicate the clear space around uh, the toilet and I need to come in 60 inches deep here. As I said, you'll have your clear space on both toilets. You're going to end up doing both toilet rooms in your call out and you need to dimension and detail both but you only need elevations uh, for one uh, restroom. The other room is going to be similar. So this is the uh, floor plan, uh, the call out, uh, where we can do our dimensions with some confidence. This is where we want uh, some detail. 
So we're going to be able to put in a door now that we know where all of our fixtures are and our clearances are. And we're going to use a 36 inch door because that gives us the clearance. And then in a commercial space, we use an 84 inch tall door because um, it just looks better. It's commercial. It's better for clear head clearance for the majority of people. And when we put in that door, we want to be sure to have some space behind the door for some structure and some frame. Now I'm uh, mirroring the uh, lavatory and mirror. We're going to put in an interior elevation. It's set to building elevation right now, which is not correct, not what we want. We want to use the interior elevation marker, which is the round. And we, um, you can see it's grabbing a different wall. And we're just going to grab this back wall here, and eventually we'll move the, um, the marker down. Um, and in order to do the rest of the elevations, we just check off, if you recall. And we do have to fix how the labels are going to be. But for now, let's just go look at the uh, front, the northern ele elevation. So here we can see the toilet and the lavatory, because I use three di dimension elements. Uh, they're in there um, at the at a certain height and whatnot. So we want to put some finishes on this wall. This is part of the, the detailing of this wall. So we need to open this up in order to be able to see the entire wall. And the wall, it, I did not open. need to open it up to the second floor. I did find out that the wall is on its own. So all I have to do is select the wall itself where I can see the orange outlines. And that gives me the sides of the wall. So I'm going to put in a wainscot, a tile wainscot up at four feet. I'm just locating that. I'm thinking through it. And I don't... Um, make allowances for that mirror it's it's a, a, a model object so it's going to show up behind there now I had a few materials already loaded in here and uh, certainly if you go manage your materials ahead of time you'll be able to select the exact material that you need and um, I'm going to do a search for tile and there is a tile mosaic in here that I'll go ahead and apply uh, to the wall I'm just going to paint uh, the wall and again I made the rookie mistake of selecting the material and closing it down so we'll select the material again I'm showing you all these warts and problems that I have so that you don't feel bad um, when you forget these things too um, so you can see that the material does not show that it has a texture so we're going to go look at it in realistic just to make sure that we did put the material on the wall we don't like to work in realistic all the time. It slows the computer down. Um, it's unnecessary. It's not drafting. Um, so anyway, we're going to take that off. And part of the problem is that the material doesn't have a texture. So we're going to go manage our materials. Go to the Manage tab. Go all the way to the left to Materials. And I'm going to call up that same tile pattern. And there it is. And and uh, if we open this up, we can see it's not under appearance. Now, if we want to change what this tile looks like, we go and take care of that picture down there. But it's surface pattern rather that we want. So because that's a mosaic tile, I'm going to use this small cross hatch. And I'm going to put that in. And you can see it's, it's there right away. It's not exactly indicative of what that mosaic looks like. But you can actually modify that kind of... Um, pattern if you want to um, and get it more accurate. Now what's difficult to do is things like a brick pattern. So on an elevation this is where we take all of our vertical dimensions. So I'm dimensioning uh, to the lavatory and I can see that the, the lavatory dimension is mounted incorrectly and I go back to this is my ADA document I provided you and the reason I'm showing this to you there's not a good diagram in the book that talks about it but there's plenty of verbiage that's here that tells you some things about it so there where they're talking about something for a child who's six children who is six through twelve years but really what we need is this line right here a lavatory for a single occupant is that the height of it be no more than 34 inches. We also need to know that we need to cover all of the exposed pipes and whatnot. So we need to bring this down to 2 foot 10 which is our 34 inch uh, dimension for that and it moves because the mirror is integral with this it's moving together uh, you may have a separate mirror the mirror must be mounted at 40 inches off the floor so here we are uh, we're looking at the rest of the elevations you need to go into every elevation and uh, put in the grab bars and the toilet tissue dispenser 
Now you can go over to the Bobrick website and download some BIM objects um, such as the grab bars, the toilet tissue dispenser, the paper towel dispenser. You will need all of these accessories. The accessories are something that we're going to denote and tag on the plans and uh, there may even be an accessory schedule. This is an important part of what the designer and architects provides because these objects and elements are very expensive and they're required by code so they need to be in the drawings. In the end this is what your drawing should look like or better.